Okay. So looking at the top of your packet for me, please. Okay, um, first thing we're just gonna kind of review quickly the relationship between F, F prime and F double prime. Okay, remember that we're gonna make this little diagram. Okay, if F is increasing, what would that tell me about F prime? If F is increasing, then F prime is positive. What about if F is decreasing? Very negative. Okay, now let's talk about concavity. If F is concave up, then what would F double prime be? Yes, and what about if F was concave down? It would be negative. Now, there's also a relationship for this middle row here. Okay, I want you to think about if F is concave up, then its second derivative is positive, but that means that the first derivative would have been increasing. Okay, so think about that for a second. If the second derivative is positive, then that means F prime's slope would have been positive, which means it would have been going. And then the same thing could be said for this, that if your second derivative is negative, then that means your first derivative had a negative. Okay? So you have a little bit of relationship there. Usually these two are good and these two are good, but we forget about this. Okay? So let's take a look at your first question. Okay, so it says, we have a graph of F prime. This is a graph of the derivative. This is not F. So then it says, here's my derivative for negative seven to seven. We have horizontal tangents at negative three, two, and five. So I'm just gonna kind of sketch those in. That means what's the slope if it's horizontal at each of those spots? Zero. So we know we have flat spots, okay? Um, so I'll put flat, flat, flat. Okay, then it says, find all places, this is part A, where F attains a relative minimum. Okay, so you have to go back to the definition of a minimum. Okay, a minimum is when F prime changes how? Close, negative to positive. So all of the places where my graph changes from negative to positive will be minimums on the original graph that I don't have a picture of. Where does that happen? at negative one, very good. Now, are there any other critical numbers that I would have a min or a max? Um, at negative five, how does the sign change at negative five? Okay, so if it goes from pluses to minuses, that would make it a relative max. And then is there another critical number? Mm -hmm. And what type would five be? Be mm -hmm. a uh, neither. And remember, here's the reason why: for it to be a min, a max, or a neither, it has to actually change sign. So if you look at five, your f prime is positive, but then it stays positive, so that doesn't count. So your critical numbers are where the derivative is zero which are the x-intercepts. Okay, I have a max when it changes plus to minus. I have a minus or a min when it changes minus to plus. So my answer for here would be find all the values where I have a minimum, I would say x equals negative one. Okay, then it says justify your answer. We would say because f prime of x, which is the graph I'm looking at, changes from negative Okay, the next question asks me to find a relative maximum. We already found it, we just have to write it down. Where was our max? And then what would our reason why be? A, because f of x changes positive to negative. Something's wrong with that. What's wrong with it? F prime. And then remember, this is a graph of f prime. So that's why we want to make sure we're putting it. Okay. All right, then one more question left here. It says find all the values where the second derivative is less than zero. 
Okay, if this were a graph of F, regular F, what would F double prime be? Concavity, is this a graph of F? This is F prime. So what feature will F double prime be? Is the slope of F. And then if you think about it, that should make sense because it's the derivative of F prime and then derivative and slope. Okay, so look at your graph. We want F double prime to be less than zero. Then we want the slope to be less than zero. So look at your graph. When does that happen? Negative seven, negative three. Okay, that's one section. Where else? Two to five. Two to five. Okay. If you put that on the AP test, you'd be really close to being right, but you'd have one thing that's wrong. They want the second derivative to be less than zero. Okay, but let's read what this says. We have horizontal tangents at negative three and at two and at five. We have a vertical tangent at three. What that means is at three, what is the slope? If it's vertical, the slope is undefined. And the only reason that matters is that just like the study session that we did yesterday, you can't link together bigger sections of graph if you have an undefined point in the middle. So I would have to technically do intervals, negative seven to negative three, two to three, and then three to five. Okay, if it's undefined, they're asking me for negative slopes, then I can't include three because it's the slope negative. No, it's undefined, okay? So I'm gonna put here, that'd be negative seven to negative three. Union two to three, union three to five. Okay, because the slope of F prime is negative. Okay. But again, if it weren't for the fact that it went vertical for a second, you could have easily put the two to five together and not had to break it up into two chunks. Okay, what else? would break up your slope and make it not exist other than it being vertical? A cusp or a corner. Okay, so if this had any cusps or corners, we would have to say, well, the slope's not really negative because it doesn't exist at a cusp or a corner. Okay? All right, turn the page. Um, all right, next question. Very similar setup here. Um, label your critical numbers. Okay, this is a graph of F prime. Where can I find the critical numbers? Okay, the zero is very good. Critical numbers are anywhere that the derivative equals zero. How many do I have? Three. Okay, I want you to on your own label which one is a min, which one is a max, which one is a neither. Okay, we just turned over to the back of the first page. Okay, yes. Oh, no, you're good. What type is negative two? Okay, a max. What type is one? Neither, because it doesn't actually pass through. And then what type is four? Also a neither. If it doesn't pass through, it doesn't count. Okay. Now, also, let's clarify, what is this a max on, on the graph of S that we don't have? Okay. So let's fill in our answers for part A. It says, find all X coordinates where F has a relative max. Give a reason for your answer. So I would say we have a relative max at X equals negative two because, and then what would I say? Okay, so this sign changes from positive to negative. Okay, almost, you're not gonna get credit. What do we need to add? The sign of what? The sign of F prime. Okay, so when you say the sign, are you talking about the slope? Are you talking about the concavity, right? So the sign is too broad that it's not actually gonna be specific enough to give you your justified. Okay, so we have a max at negative two. 
because F prime changes from plus to minus. Make sense? Okay. Next question says, uh, find the absolute maximum attained on the interval. Um, okay, and then look up here. It gives us our, um, I actually don't think that goes here. I don't know why this is, okay. Cross out that one, go to B. Like that, I'll put on the wrong question. Okay, it says, on what intervals is F concave down and decreasing? Okay, so for F to be concave down, what would I be looking for on the derivatives? What would I be looking for? Second derivative to be what? F double prime is negative. What feature would that be on this graph? This is already F prime. We need a negative slope. Then the slope of F is negative. Does that make sense? So remember that if you're looking at the graph of F prime, F double prime would just be the derivative of that, which would be the slope. Okay, now it says I want F to be concave down and decreasing. How can I make F be decreasing? Less than zero. And what needs to be less than zero? F prime is negative or less than zero, which means where should I be on the graph? Below, very good. So I need a negative slope and I need to be below the x-axis. Okay. So look at your graph. Also notice it says it has to be both of those. So find the sections of the graph where your slope is negative and you're below the x-axis. How many points does that happen for? How many intervals? One to three. Okay, one to three, and anywhere else? Negative two to one. Negative two to negative one, yeah. Those would be your two seconds. Okay. Um, another thing, it doesn't matter if you put brackets or parentheses, so just put parentheses, okay, because that's what we've been doing all year. So it would be negative two to negative one union, and then one to three. Okay. All right, next question. We want to find points of inflection. Remember that a point of inflection is anywhere that the second derivative changes sign. F double prime changes sign. Okay, but what feature is F double prime on this graph? This slope. And so then if I look at my graph, put X's anywhere that your slope changes direction. How many places does that happen? How many places does the second derivative change sign? Tell me the first one. Or sorry, negative one. Negative one, where else? One. Where else? Three. Where else? So just be those three. And then remember, what would those be? Those would be points of inflection on the original graph. Of that. Okay, so your X intercepts are your mins and maxes. And then your mins and maxes on this graph are actually the points of inflection. Okay, uh huh. So the X intercepts on F prime are the mins and maxes of F, because that's where you're passing through the x-axis. And then the mins and maxes on this graph are the points of inflection on F. Can you write it down? Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay, so your X intercepts on F prime are critical numbers, which are mins and maxes on regular F. And then the mins and maxes on F prime are points of inflection on. So read through that, see if that makes sense. Okay. Does the F, the 
Um, actually, why don't we practice? Let's practice sketching the graph just to make sure that we remember how to do that. Um, so if you want to just kind of pick a little spot. Okay, let's say that it said to sketch a graph of that. Because remember, we only have a picture of F prime. So what you would do is you would set up your number line. This is going to be F and then F prime. What were my critical numbers? Negative two, one, and four, right? So negative two, one, and four. And then remember that I was positive, negative, negative. So positive, negative, negative. That tells me what F is doing. F was increasing because it was above positive values. Then it decreased and then decreased. Does that make sense why negative two is a max? Yes or no? Yes? Okay, and now let's do F double prime. F double prime is the slope of this graph. So I'm gonna put my critical numbers, which were my X's. So I had one at negative one, and then I had one at one. So I'm gonna line these up with each other. And then I had one at three. Like that? Yep. Okay, and now remember that for the F double prime graph, we're looking at the slope of this graph. So I started down, up, down, up. So I would have gone plus, minus, plus, I need to do that backwards, minus, plus, minus, plus. And then what would that tell me about F? That would have told me the concavity. So it would have started concave down, then up, then down, then up. And with that information, I can sketch the graph of F. I know enough information to say about what it looks like. So let's sketch it right here to the side. Okay, at negative two, I'm gonna have a max. So I'm gonna do like a little sort of like tail top. Okay, then at one, I know I'm gonna go flat, but I'm not actually gonna have a min because remember, I'm gonna go down and then I'm gonna keep going down. Okay, then my concavity is gonna switch at each of these numbers. So negative one, my concavity is gonna switch. Positive one, my concavity is gonna switch. And then positive. And then all I have to do is connect the dots with the right shape. So before negative two, which way is my graph going? Up or down? Okay. Up, but how? Concave down. So I'm going to go like that. Okay, then the second section of my graph from negative two to negative one, I'm going to turn to be pointed down, but what's my concavity? Still down until when? Until negative one. So I'm going to go down until negative one. And then what happens at negative one? Then I'm going to switch to be still going down, but now I'll be concave up. So like that. And then at one, this is important. I'm going to flatten out to a zero slope because remember this was a critical number, but then I'm going to keep going down. What shifts though at one? I'm going to go down, but how am I going to do it? the concavity is gonna switch to be down. And then from three on, I'm gonna keep going down, but what switches? I'll switch back to being concave up. Okay, and then look at your graph and make sure that your things that you said really happened. Do I have a max right here? Yes. Do I have a neither right here where it kind of like slowed down, but then kept going down? Yeah. Okay, and then at four, did it go flat again? Yeah, and that's another neither. So that should also make sense. Okay, so this would be a possible graph for f of x. And then remember, we don't know exactly how steep it is, but we know the general shape. Is it increasing or decreasing? And what's the concept? So you should be able to find those things. Also, your points of inflection. 
they are where I switch here. I'm concave down. Then after that point, I'm concave up. Then I'm back to concave down. And then I'm back to concave up. So that's the process I use to graph it, but you should be able to do that connection. Them actually making you graph it isn't as often as you matching. Okay. All right, so let's take a look at the next one. Okay, this time they're giving you a graph of velocity, but overall it's the exact same thing. Okay, first thing, we want to find the time and the position when the particle is farthest to the left. Is that a max or a min? Farthest to the left. That's a relative minimum. So then how do I want velocity to change for a minimum? Okay, so let's think about if it's a minimum, I want to go down and then up. What's the sign change? Negative slope to positive slope. So V of T needs to change from the negatives to the positives. Where does that happen on your velocity graph? Okay, but what is, yeah, this is a graph of velocity. So then where am I at rest points? They would be here on the x-axis, right? So three and five are my contenders, but then which one changes the right way? Okay, three, so that would be t equals three. Okay. Um, all right, next question. Um, let's skip B for a second. We'll come back to it, go to C. C is asking you about speed. Do we remember how to check if speed is increasing or decreasing? What do we need? The velocity and the acceleration, what about them? They have to be the same sign. So they could both be plus, but they could also both be negative. Yeah. So I'm gonna put for speed, you need velocity and acceleration to have the same. Now, think about what features those would be on this graph. This is already a velocity graph. Then what would velocity be? What feature? Velocity would be the y values. And what would acceleration be? The slope. So I can either be above with a positive slope or below with a negative slope. So think about where those happen. You can just kind of shade them on your number line. Okay, where am I above with a positive slope? Three to four. Where am I below with a negative slope? Zero to one and five to six. Okay, so zero to one and five to six. And three to four. Okay, for my justification, because V of T and A of T have the same sign. Okay, don't put weird stuff like they agree or they're equal. Those are not correct. Yes. So on the actual A, we have to Oh, I didn't read the question. Thank you. That's a great question. What is the answer for on two to three? Oh. And then let's put the actual answer you would put it on two to three. Thank you for saying that. Okay, the speed is decreasing. And what would our answer be for why? Because that is a different question. Because what? because they have opposite signs. So V of T and A of T have opposite signs. Okay. So I'm gonna change the top of this and put speed increasing. Okay. But thank you for pointing that out. Okay, a lot of times they do say when is it speeding up. So just but make sure you. Okay, next question says at what time 
is the acceleration of the particle negative. What is acceleration on this graph? Just the slope. So you're not looking for things to agree. If they're asking you for acceleration, that's just the slope needs to be negative. And then where does that happen on your graph that you have negative slopes? Okay, zero to, um, let's read, it'll tell you where they are. It says you have horizontal tangent at one and at four. So if it's horizontal at one, then I know that's where it turns. So make sure that you're careful about, don't just guess, go back and read. If it's not clear, they'll put it in the paragraph. So one and four are my turning points. Then I would do zero to one and then four to six. Also don't put like four to infinity. Okay, you need to stay within the window that they give you, okay? Um, and then let's just put here because you cannot put A of T less than zero. If they give you a graph of V, then your answer has to be talking about that graph. So what would I say about this graph as my answer? Okay, the slope of velocity graph is negative. Okay, and I would make sure Okay, if you really care about your AP test, which I hope that you do, just be specific. Don't leave anything up for them to take away a point because you were quite specific. Okay. All right, last little part here. This is the same type of question as what we just did on the last one that we had to skip. Okay, so it says, how many values of time is the particle at X equals negative eight? This is a position. If they give you a velocity graph and they're asking you about position, they must have told you the position in the paragraph. So look back up at the question. When did they tell us the particle's position? Uh huh. What's the position? So I want you to make a chart. Okay, my initial position, let's make a position chart here. At time zero, my particle was at negative two. At time zero, my particle was negative two. Now, what does the area on the velocity graph tell me? How far the particle went to the left if it's below? And then the displacement of the particle above would be how far it went forward. Did they tell us how to find those areas? Go back and read the paragraph. The areas of the regions bounded by the time axis and velocity on zero to three, three to five, and five to six are eight, three, and two, respectively. That means that this area is eight. The next area is three. And then the last area here is two. What goes in your chart are your endpoints and your critical numbers. What are my critical numbers that I already found earlier? Three and five. And then what's my endpoint? Zero, two. You can see it in the question right here, zero to six. Okay, so I'm starting at negative two. From zero to three, I travel eight units. Which way did I travel those eight units if my area is below? To the left or backwards. So if I go backwards eight, but I'm already at negative two, what am I at now? Negative 10, that's right. Hey, Ash, if you're gonna have the sound on, we go in the hallway, babe. Here. Thanks, bud. Okay, next one. I want to go from three to five. I want to travel three units forward. What position would that put me at? Negative seven. And then for my last little bit of units here, I go backwards two more. Well, then what would my position be at the very end of the interval? Negative, uh, backwards two from negative seven, I'd be at negative 
what position do they want me to count? How many times I'm there? Negative eight. Negative eight. Okay, so think about it. Could I go from negative two to negative 10 without hitting negative eight? No, then I know I hit it at least once. What about from negative 10 to negative seven? Would I have hit negative eight again? Yes. What about from negative seven back up to negative nine? Yeah. One more time. So how many times would I have had to hit it? Three. Three. Okay, what theorem says that I can't skip numbers in the middle? Intermediate value theorem. And you can call it IVT, that's fine. Okay, so I'm going to put three times because negative eight is between the positions at times zero, three, five, and six. Okay, and then we'll put IVT guarantees this. Okay, so remember, even if your thing is going to speed of light, Okay, it can't just appear and teleport. So even if it goes really fast through negative eight, if I go from negative two to negative 10, I pass through that position. And if I go back to negative seven, I pass through it again, et cetera. Okay? So three times negative eight is between the positions. And then also make sure if this were the real AP test and it wasn't so blown up, this chart would be part of that work. So just make sure. What should I have? labeled over here that should really be the top okay and then on this side you could put x of t is fine for position um but just make sure that you label stuff you know for that they're critical numbers correct remember anytime you do a candidate's chart it should be the endpoints and the critical number section of the chart okay all right turn the page Um, okay, let's see. All right, so let's do a couple calculator questions. Ooh, we're not going to get that one. Um, okay, take a look at this one. Okay, it says f prime equals e to the x minus 3x squared. Okay, where would f have a relative max? So in your calculator, okay, these are all calculator questions. You couldn't do them without. Um, what would you need to do procedure wise? Do I need to take the derivative myself? No. They already gave me the derivative. So, no. Okay, then what do I need to do? Look at the graph. Look at the graph. That's exactly right. So, go into f prime. We have e to the x minus 3x squared. And then I'm going to sketch the graph on my paper here. Okay, there we see our graph. It goes up, down, up. And then it's looking for a relative maximum. Which of those x-intercepts would be the relative max? One, two, or three? Which one would be the max? One, two, three, and be two. Because how does the sign change for a max? It changes from positive to negative. So let's practice just finding that number. Make sure we remember how to do it. Second trace. We want the zero is a fancy way of saying the x-intercept. And then remember, you have two choices. You can use the little arrow buttons, or you can just guess. What whole numbers is that intersection between? zero and one. So what I'm going to do, I hate doing the arrow thing, is when it says left bound, I'm going to put zero. When it asks for the right bound, I'm going to put one. I'm picking numbers on either side. And then for the guess, I'm just going to kind of guess that it's close to one. And then you can see your point. Okay. If you want to do the arrows though, Remember, you would want to go a little bit above, hit enter, a little bit below, hit enter, and then back to the middle for your third one. Okay? So 0.91 would be your answer there. Questions on that? All right, next one. 
Okay, it says, let F be this graph. How many points of inflection does the graph have? Okay, what do we do with F prime? Look at the graph and now pay attention to your interval. If it's a sine graph, it's gonna go crazy. So let's restrict the domain to this. Now, my pre-cal kids are doing um, vectors and they're in degree mode. So before you graph it, hit mode and switch yourself to vector again. Okay. And I'm gonna go into Y equals and then I'm gonna type my equation. In. So it was the sine of X cubed. Oops. The sine of X cubed. And then how do I adjust my window so I don't have to look at the full thing? Hit the window and then your X min is negative 1.8 your X max will be positive 1.8. And then once you have that typed in, look at your graph. You're gonna count the points of inflection. What would I be looking for on this graph for a point of inflection? What feature? Change in slope, very good. So count them. Okay, how many do we have? One, two, now does this count? No, because it goes uphill, but then it keeps going uphill. That doesn't count. Then three, four. Okay, how many X, uh, how many mins and maxes would this graph have? I would have one here. And then does this count as a min or a max on the original graph? Does it pass through the X axis? That would count. Yeah, because it actually does pass through. And then I have a third one. So if it were asking you for critical numbers, you would have three. Okay. Uh-huh. Um, hold on, let me draw this graph. Okay, so remember that your points of inflection are where the slope changes sign. So I'm gonna put X's on the POIs. You have one here, one here. One here, one here. Those are your points of inflection. And remember, why are they points of inflection? Because this is a graph of F prime already. So the slope of this graph is the second derivative already. Okay, then where do I find the relative extrema like the mins and maxes? Where are those points? Along the x-axis, yeah? Those would be your mins and maxes, just like we did last time, remember? Okay, these are the mins and maxes along the x-axis. And where do we see this? So one, two, three. Those would be your mins and maxes. So for my mins and maxes, I would have three. And for points of inflection, I would have four. Okay, but you should be prepared that they could ask you to count either one of them. Now, the one other thing I do want to remind you of is that they wouldn't say count the mins and maxes. What would they call that? Do you remember search the e? extrema? Okay, so they're not going to say mins and maxes. They're going to say extrema, and you should just know extreme values are the biggest or the smallest. Okay, uh, next one. They gave me F and they want to know about a change in concavity. Should I graph this function if it's f? Should I graph this function if it's f? No. I need to take at least the derivative. I could take the second derivative, but I'm just going to do the first one. Okay, what's the derivative of cosine to x? Negative, Negative sine. 2x times what? Do you remember chain rule? Yeah, if it's a 2x in the middle, the derivative of that is an extra times 2. So I'm going to put it there in the front. Okay, then for ln, do you remember the derivative is 1 over x? So in this case, it would be 1 over 3x. But then what would I have to remember to times by for my chain rule? The 3x, the derivative would just be times 3. Okay. 
Um, you could, here's the problem. When you're choosing between your second trace options, point of inflection isn't an option. So you could kind of try to like look and see where the slope changes, but look at these answers. They're all pretty close together. Does that make sense? So like, look, if I graph this, how am I going to find the points of inflection? I'll maybe be able to kind of see where they are, but I can't actually find them because look at your second trace. There's no POI option for me to find it. What are the only things I can find? Zeros or mins and maxes. So if I take the derivative, where will I find the points of inflection? They'll be the high points and the low points. Now, what my said was interesting, he said take the derivative twice. And if I take the derivative twice, then instead of looking at the mins and maxes, what would I be looking for? The points of inflection would be the x-intercepts if I went to the second derivative, which I'm not gonna do. Okay. So go into your y equals right here. We're gonna type in our f prime graph. Well, the calculator in the second trace, doesn't that let me graph the derivative also? Mm, no. How did you graph it? I think I'm putting the F uh, equation and then look at the point of inflection. So I'm going to find the intercept. You should want it. Okay, type in your F prime graph. Uh huh. Okay, that will find the slope one specific, but it won't give you like the whole graph for whatever point you want. So, like if you wanted the slope like at five, that would work. But if I want to see a whole graph of the derivative, then that actually won't. Work. Okay. So let's type it in. We want negative two sine two x, and then plus. 1 over 3x and then times 3. Would there be an easier way for me to write 1 over 3x times 3? What could I do instead? 3 over 3. Yeah, I just do 3 over 3. And then even the 3s could cross out. But I read it. Okay, from there, what is this a graph of? Is this going to be f? This is f prime. So the points of inflection are going to be the x's, remember? Okay, so there's my graph. I see that I have two, it looks like, that I can choose from. Okay, and then it says, what is the least value of X where it changes concavity? All my numbers are positive. So then which one should I find? The first one or the second one? The second, second one. one. Uh, now, when I find this one, what am I going to find in the calculator? Second trace what? Mm -hmm. The minimum, very good. And this is like you should have learned in algebra two, yes? Sure. Negative two sine two X plus one over three X times. It should be in radian mode, correct? Yep. You want me to look at it? Okay, let me see it. I'll look at it. Okay, so you have one side here, you have one side here, hit second trace, we want this spot right here, so we're going to find the minimum, and then I'm going to go a little bit to the left of that spot, then I'll go a little bit to the right of that spot, so I'm going to cursor over to the other side, and then remember for enter, I'm going to go back to the minimum. And then that would be your number right here. So you should be able on your calculator to find x intercepts, mins and maxes, and then of course derivatives. Okay. 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 You had your super zoomed out. Mine is still zoomed in from the other question. Oh, yeah. Well, you don't know how far to go because I don't know. Let me see. Well, 
What did you say? Will it be more specific when you see them, or if it tells you? If you're zoomed out that much, just hit zoom in and then enter, and it'll zoom in for you. It might not go perfectly to 1.8 and negative 1.8, but it would give you like a closer window. Yeah, you have to make sure to get all the way to the other side of the curve. So that's, and then for your guess, just go back. Huh? So we got 0.93, which is answer B. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. The x and the change. Yeah. So you'd be looking for these. So these would be your points of inflection here and here. And then uh, what would the x-intercepts be? This would have been a min. This would have been a max. Because remember, this is a graph of So if it's an F prime graph, then your mins and maxes are the x-intercepts where it changes sign, and your um, slope changes. The second derivative, then your second derivative would change sign here and here. Now this isn't the same graph, but then these would be your points of I'll circle back to that and show that to you. Okay, two more left real quick. If we have velocity typed into our calculator and you're on the calculator part of the exam, how do you find acceleration? Take the derivative. And that's the second trace six that you should know how to do. So let's just do it real quick. Make sure we remember. Okay, three plus 4.1. Cosine 0.9x. And then remember, it's second trace, option six. Now, if your graph is super zoomed in like mine, I'm going to type in that I want the derivative at four, and it's going to give me an error. Why can I not take the derivative at four on my graph? What did my window go from? Do you remember? 1.8 to 1.8, 4 is not on it. So if I try to type in 4, then it's going to be like, oh, I cannot do that for you. Okay, so you have to go back to your window and either make it negative 10 to 10 again, or you can hit zoom 6 and it'll automatically adjust it back. Okay, but you can't take the slope at a number that you can't already see on the graph. Okay, so then second trace dy dx is the slope number six, and then I want it at four and then push. Okay, and then I see my dy dx is. Okay, last question for today. We have acceleration given by this. We want the velocity. What is the relationship between velocity and acceleration? Antiderivative. Okay, so do you remember this? F of B equals F of A plus the integral from A to B. Do you remember that? And this is what we want. This is what we have. And then we're going to integrate from what we already have to what we want. That's exactly what this question is asking you, just in a weird way. We have the acceleration, but what do we want? What do we want? The velocity at two. When do we know the velocity already? When do we already have it? The velocity at time one. And then I'm going to integrate from one to two to see how much it changed. And then remember, how do I get from little f to capital F? I take in antiderivative. How do I get from acceleration to velocity? Antiderivative. Okay. Then what is my v of one, my velocity at one? It tells me that it's two plus. And then this integral, I would just do in the calculator. Okay, and then where my a is, I'm going to set this formula in. So it tells me my acceleration is the natural log 
of one plus two to the T. And then I would just. So if you had a graph, you would find this area yourself. But if it's on the calculator portion, you can just boop, 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 type it in, add two, and then you'd know your velocity at two. So this is what you want. This is what you have. And then you integrate from what you have. So we'll type it in and then we're done. Two plus mass and nine equals one to two. Function is the natural log of one plus two up to the X. Comes out to 3.346, which is letter. Make sense? All right. Good job. Um, if you have your yellow sheet, pull it out, write down today's date is 4-13. Uh, 4-13. And the session that you attended is graph of F, F prime, not the graphs of F, F prime, and F double prime. Thank you. Uh-huh. There you go. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, it's not on mine, and I might have only if I do the all. Okay. Uh, good job, guys. Uh -huh. Okay. I guess. Um, yesterday, we needed this. Y'all yeah. have a great day. <laughs> session tomorrow, but the next Thursday is where we added in the session for Monday that we skipped. Have a good day. Yeah, because this is your Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. Good job, guys.